welcome everybody. Today's the day after Christmas, and uh, I was sent a a uh, magazine for Christmas, Tom's Building Tips. And in this uh, Building Tips book, he has his uh, assembly of a Millennial Wing and a Lincoln Log Wing. And I think we're going to give it a... a uh, Millennial Wing, a try. Now, never built one. No big deal. I don't see why I can't. I gotta go down and uh, borrow the uh, the jig from my friend. But I've made up my my uh, jig for cutting the ribs already, according to the instructions. Now, Tom has told me that he's built two SB11 wings in four days. I can't even build one geoboat wing in four days complete unless I really stay after it. There's just too many, too many parts to cut out with the uh, the lost foam system. So my idea is, is I'm going to jig this up, and I have some lost foam cradles, and I'm going to go ahead and build it on the jig and attach the sheeting the leading edge, molded leading edge in the jig, in the uh, lost foam cradle. So it should give me both the best of both worlds. I have to build a continental that I, I owe a gentleman and uh, we're going to get to that. And I'm going to bring that all up on tape. I'm also going to finish off in this in the next 10 days our Excalibur build. Now, my bench is clear. I, I have uh, completed the first round. I have another airplane to, to do, but I really need to get caught up on some of this woodwork that I've taken in. That's what's uh, up with Stun Hanger. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share my videos. Now, this particular intro is just for what I'm going to do with the... Uh, with the Millennial Book, and I want to thank Tom for sending me this uh, Christmas present. And of course, I have Gary to thank for all the wood we're going to build some stuff out of, so that helps. So, on to the project of building a classic legal continental and a geobolt wing. So, we'll see you in a short. You know, cutting a few pieces. And uh, as I stated in the uh, prior video, uh, you know, I'm always up for new ways of doing things. So we're going to finish cutting this spar up, and I'll try to edit out, you know, much of the repetitive nature of this. Now you wonder, how did I, how did I cut those? Or I, I made this this fence with a, uh, a small nail in it so that when you move the nail over and set it on the nail it gives you perfect spacing on the ribs and you don't have to think about it. Well I, I pulled the nail back out of the, of the fence so that I could do the last notch because that's done right on the end. And that's it. That's all we need the uh, saw for. And I'll edit out some of that noise. But I want to show you uh, what this wing weighs. Here we have uh, our spar. Now there will be a second spar that I'll cut out, but we'll just use this as a reference because the back spar is one inch. And uh, 
We're going to see what this wing weighs, and I'm not sure that it's going to weigh this much because we have extra material. So, our spar weighs 20 grams, and <clears throat> while watching TV, I've been making leading trailing edges. So the uh, the spar on the leading edge. And the trailing edge weighs 64 grams, and this is a set of ribs for this. I don't think I can build a lost foam wing this way. We're at 77 grams. Some of this is going to get cut off. 77 grams, 2.7 ounces for an entire wing, and you can't beat that for weight. Of course, we're going to have some sheeting on it. Now, I'm still it's still up for debate whether I'm going to sheet the entire wing or just build it as a you know regular wing. <clears throat> so that's 2.7. It's going to take. Let's figure this out. We're going to have four sheets of 16th for that and two sheets for that. This should cover the cap strip. The cap strips, of course, this, some of this will be knocked off of there. Four and a half. Four point nine ounces for an entire wing. <laughs> and you can't beat that. I'm going to try the white glue uh, set up. I've got some, I had some little bottles from, that I put uh, some of the Elmer's glue in. And, uh, I guess what I'm going to do, let me zoom out here, is I'm going to set the, I don't have uh, the Tom Morris building jig. Even though this is his setup, I did, from years ago, I was going to build one of these wings, but never got around to it. I did end up with some jig blocks. I have more jig blocks that I th thought of way more than I need, but that's all right. I have uh, three sets of these that I've acquired along the way. So, how I'm going to do this without the Tom Morris building jig is right here on this glass, and that shouldn't be a problem. So let's put this uh, this back. I'm hoping that you. Uh, you know, kind of grasp of what I'm doing here. The uh, this is more more of a how-to than a than a funny video like I did for Christmas and some of the other stuff. And I'm going to try to uh, take some different shots. And we'll put this up. Dump this. I have some eight, eight. <clears throat> so, we're gonna lay up this wing. I'm gonna clean this mess up, and I'll be back in a minute, and we'll try to try to carry on. I started the video off a little bit different. I started off with explaining what I was going to do, and not showing how I did it. And the reason I did that is I wanted to see if I could do it. Well, <clears throat> I made one of the uh, Millennial Wing uh, pieces here, wing halves. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to make the uh, out outboard side now. This piece came out at 2.1 ounces. This, this whole inboard wing. That means we're going to have a four and two tenths wing. Four ounce, two tenths wing. That's phenomenal. That's really good. So, I made the jig as per Tom's instructions in his book where you take a piece of, he used plywood, I used a, 
piece of basswood that I had around and I made a, a rib template out of balsa wood he used uh, aluminum but I used balsa wood with uh, 64 light ply on it then I made the rib template and the two uh, nails that the template slides over and we're going to strip out some ribs for the other for the other side. I thought I had made enough, but I didn't. I'm going to have another light over this bench to get a little bit better lighting. Come Wednesday, my ballast will be in for my other for my other fixture. So that will help. The first thing that you're going to want to do is I, I do wood selection. Now this is not my best wood. This is 332nd, 16 grams, 3 by 36. I don't know what that works out to, but it doesn't matter. These ribs won't weigh anything anyway. So we're going to have to cut the length. Of, of the rib to fit in the jig. Now one thing I did change from Tom is I, I put a couple of stops, one on each end, so that I can get this piece of wood to slide up and down in there square. So what I do is I just I measure it, take a square, and we'll cut it off. You get about seven ribs out of each one of these pieces that you're going to cut here. And we're going to have to do that four times. Now I won't go through all four times of uh, me cutting because it's just repetition. But I will show you the one sheet. So the first thing I do is I square up the ends with a sanding block. Now Tom has a different way of doing things. I'm not a millennial wing builder. I just uh, have kind of found my own way to do it. So anyway, we're going to stick the uh, rib up there. We have to get it started first. So. We gotta cut the first one. It usually takes two cuts to get it right. We gotta take off the trim off the excess here. going to recut this just I'll cut about another sixteenth of an inch off so it's perfect put it up against the stops Push it up till it touches. Didn't get it quite right. If you take care to get the, the first rib started correctly, your ribs will come out better. There we go. So, it only take me 10 minutes to cut all these ribs. That's one. Push it up.
I was debating whether to uh, sheet the wing or put cap strips on it. I'm just going to do cap strips. Now in the beginning of this video, or prior to me cutting the ribs, I've shown you how I made the spar and how I set up my my table saw to cut those notches perfectly and that works worked really well you know as I as I try new things like with my fuselage building that I got from Richard Oliver and I find things that work those are the things you want to stick with. Don't be a tr don't be afraid to try new stuff. Is is this wing as accurate as a lost form? No. I I already know that for a fact. But it will be plenty good enough. So there you have it. We've already cut up one of these pieces and, and you end up with a piece left over like this and it's just no good. So <clears throat> we'll go through and I'll cut one more. And, and I have to do this four times. And uh, I won't bore you with all four times, but I'll go ahead and do it once more so you get a grip. So the jig is made on a piece of quarter inch basswood. You cut out your rib profile, your rib template, and you make it longer than the rib, about an inch on that end and an inch on the other end. Then you cut out the duplicate for the top so you can move it up a quarter inch each time. And when you're making this piece, the jig piece, measure down a quarter inch on the leading edge and make it 90 degrees to the trailing edge. And that's how you know how, how thick your rib should be. If you can see that there's a line right there from where I'm cutting. So each one of these ribs is a quarter inch all the way across. You know, or you can do it by eye. If you're building an I-beam wing and you do it by eye, that's okay because then you can just sand them straight. But I, I'm trying to get away with as little sanding as possible, so... So we know we're going to have to cut this a couple of times. I, I don't know why, I just always have to... The first starter rib... Maybe Tom will watch this and tell me what I'm doing wrong. It just, it just didn't, didn't get in there square enough on the first cut. Or I could be just too critical, I don't know.
takes 14 ribs for each side, so 14 on the top, we'll say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, takes 15. So I have almost cut enough for the outboard top with I mean there's no doubt about it this takes a lot of a lot less wood to build a wing this way than if you were cutting full ribs I would say it takes less than half the wood now <clears throat> that's 2.1 ounces that wing but it is and it's not my best wood for the ribs because I wanted wood that was a little more stout but it is my best wood for the sheeting the cap strips and the uh, trailing edge we're gonna go in, I'm gonna show that before I cut the camera and once I get this set of ribs cut for the top I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'll edit up the movie and we'll get it posted because I didn't post a movie today and I want to do at least one a day Okay, so we have the top of one side. One, so three, three, five, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, and one is fifteen. I need fifteen more. So you see how fast you can cut a set of ribs. There's absolutely no way I could cut a set of ribs that fast for a lost wound. Now the leading and trailing edges. And the spar. The spar was cut. I believe I showed it how, I, how it was cut. I drew a center line. The distance up that the blocks are from the center. So this is going to be in the center of the wing. I notched these. Uh, notches with my saw so that the rib would fit down in there flush perfectly flush there obviously it doesn't go there but and the leaving edge this is quarter inch stock quarter inch uh, material I cut two half inch pieces half inch wide by quarter inch thick and I glued them on top of a 16th inch, one half inch wide shelf. So you end up with a T like that. The trailing edge is quarter by quarter glued onto a half inch piece of 16th. So basically, I could lay up half the wing right now in just that fast. I mean, <laughs> Ridiculous. These were put together with white glue. And uh, I did build this wing with CA. I was going to use white glue, but CA is just so nice. It's just so fast. And I went ahead and already sanded off the, rounded off the leading edge just to see how it was going to turn out. And I got it pretty close. I'm going to have to uh, do a little spotting right here, a little spot sanding with the 320 right here but <clears throat> but it did come out straight and super light I'm real happy with how light it is so I'm going to edit up the movie and as it's loading onto YouTube I'm going to go back and cut the other ribs and on the next reel 
I'll be showing how I laid it up using the jig blocks. And the jig, the uh, jig blocks, the trailing edge fits right into the jig block like so, and the same with the leaning edge, so that it's all equal distance from the glass top. So, I guess John Simpson and uh, and Tom came up with this, and it's it, it's a good way to do things. I mean, I like I said, I never built one like this. I did uh, get one of the Cavalier kits, and I never put it together because I've never seen a wing put together like this and didn't have an instruction book. So now that uh, that I've done one, it's a valid way to do things. What this model is going to be is going to be everybody was, you know, like Randy Powell's uh, shoestring stunner. That's what this is going to be. I have a shoestring scale plane this year. I'm building a shoestring stunner. So, <laughs> you won't be able to tell what I'm flying. I'm going to paint them both the same. I have puke yellow and uh, red with a 16 and all that on there. So, we'll see how it goes. I don't know. Something different. So, make sure you like, subscribe, share. There's a donate button up on the top right. Donate to the project. Help me keep uh, stunt hanger videos uh, coming for you. They cost money to, to make the content. And uh, I appreciate everybody's support. And uh, go to stunthanger.com or cocraftsman.com. Join the conversation if you're not a member there. You'll truly be happy you did. So until we see you again, tie lines, fair winds. See ya.